Welcome to part two of this business planning series, your ultimate guide to creating a business plan. If you've joined here, then feel free to go back and watch the previous video, which is an introductory video into business planning. In this video, I'm going to cover expenses forecasts. It's so important that you create an expenses forecast. There are a number of reasons why you need to do this. If you are going to start a business or expand a business, it's absolutely crucial that you know how much it's going to cost you. So many people jump into business thinking it's going to cost X, Y, and Z, and it actually costs them a lot more than they initially thought, purely because they didn't take the time to detail all the expenses that the business is going to incur. There are other reasons why it's so important to create an expenses forecast. Number one is without an expenses forecast, you cannot create a projected profit and loss statement. Or in other words, you will not know if the business is going to be profitable or not. So it's so crucial that you create an expenses forecast so you know whether the business is going to be profitable or not. You know, that's a real important factor when deciding to start the business or not. Another reason why the expenses forecast is so crucial and you need to do it is you need to create a cash flow forecast. You need to ensure that the business is going to have sufficient cash to keep trading. Without the expenses forecast, you cannot do that. With the expenses forecast, it's so important that you take the time to really list everything every single expense no matter how small it is as mentioned some people just jump right in they don't give it enough thought and there are so many expenses they did not initially think about so please brainstorm think about every single expense the frequency of the expense and the approximate amount of the expense and when i say everything i mean everything things like stock postage insurance computer costs accounting costs, travel costs, motor costs, rent, rates, wages, printing, stationery, subcontractor costs, and the list goes on and on. Just think about everything and list it all down. Taxes, research costs, training costs, blah, blah, blah. You know, I could go on forever. So please really brainstorm and create that list. And let's jump right in and start creating our expenses forecast. So this is Microsoft Excel. I'll be creating the whole business plan on this software, but we're going to start off with the expenses forecast. As I mentioned in the previous video, if you're new to Excel, if you've never used it, then please go and take my free Excel basics course. It will help you so much. If you have some sort of experience with Excel, then you should be fine because I'm going to guide you through everything. A couple of things to quickly note. The first is I am not an ex Excel expert. I may do things that you wouldn't do on the software. There might be quicker ways to do things that I'm doing. I do apologize if that's the case and it will likely be the case. I am not an Excel expert. I am a business planning expert. I specialize in accounting and business planning, not in Excel. But I use Excel to obviously um, do my business planning and accounting as well as bookkeeping and credit control and everything else. Another thing to mention is it's actually a lot more difficult than you may think to show someone around Excel and create tutorials like this. So please be patient, please bear with it. If you've got questions, leave them in the comments section below. Another thing to mention is I do have other people in the office today so you may hear some background noise so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to click on this box at the top left which highlights the whole spreadsheet and I'm going to change the font to 10 it's default 11 I'm going to change it to 10 and I'm going to make everything italic that's just the way I like things it makes the business plan look a lot more professional Obviously, the font and size of the font isn't that important, but it does provide a much nicer 
and eye-friendly business plan. Now we have one sheet. There's this little plus icon here for new sheet. We are going to need eight in total. So I'll keep clicking this button until I have eight sheets. Now what I'm going to do is highlight sheet one again, right click and click copy. That copies the sheet. I'm then going to go to sheet two, right click and paste. And I'll do that on each sheet just so that every sheet is now the same font with the same font size and all in italics. Obviously I could just go to each sheet individually and change the font size. But I think it's just slightly quicker to do this. Okay, so we've got our eight sheets. The first sheet, the sheet we're doing in this video is the expenses forecast. So what we can do is right click on the sheet here down the bottom click rename and I'm just going to put expenses you can put expenses forecast whatever is going to make sense to you I have put expenses now the next thing we need to do is to ensure that these columns are the right width so this first column which is column A I'm going to click and drag it to 114 now the way I'm doing that is just hovering between these columns here and you'll get this left right arrow up here click and drag and you can change the column so column a is 114 column b i'm going to make 16 29 and then the rest of these columns from c to n i'm going to make 843 now the best way to do that is to click um, on multiple columns, so C to N, so I'm just click and holding and dragging across, then right clicking on the columns, go to column width, and what did I say, 843, which is already the default, so that's fine, so that's 843, and then this last column, I'm going to make 114 just like column A. So that gives me my starting template for this expense forecast. At the top left here, we can put the business name. So I'm going to put the bookkeeping master limited. Obviously you can put your business name or just business name A or whatever it is, just make something up if you don't have a business name yet. Put that at the top left, so that's the business name. And then just below here, I'm going to give a title to the document. So I'm going to put three year expenses forecast. Now, most business plans are for three years. They cover three years of expenses, sales, profitability, cash flow. Some business plans go as high as five years. Some are only for a year. It really depends on the needs of the business but this plan will be for three years because that's sort of like bog standard in the business planning industry. Okay, good start. Down at B4 here, we're going to put in the dates. So we can put in year one, or if you know that you're going to start the business, say this year or next year, you could put 2020 or 2021, 2024, whatever the dates are, but I'm going to put year one. Now, below year one, we can start listing our expenses. And I'm going to list them down to, or from B5 to B19. So we can list our expenses. I'll just put accounting, costs, bank charges. Obviously, list your own expenses, but there'll be something like this. Directors pay. Financing costs, insurance, lease payments, marketing, office costs, small equipment, staff costs, travel and motor, and have a website, costs, spare, 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 spare. 
Okay, so we have my list of expenses. Now what you can do if you need more than B5 to B19, so that 15 cells, if you need more than that, if you need a longer list, then what you can do is just create a new tab, list everything, and then have categories of expenses on the expenses forecast, rather than individual expense titles, you could just have categories such as expenses for office, expenses for travel, etc, etc. Now along the top here, we're going to put some dates in. If you know specific dates, then you can put specific dates in, but I'm just going to break it down to months, so month one, month two, and so forth. If I highlight these cells and then click and drag that filled box at the bottom right, then it should go all the way to month 12 for me. In B20, I'm going to put total in pounds. You could put total in euros, total in dollars, whatever works for you. And then all we need to do is create borders. So if I click and drag from B4 to B20, and then use the border feature up here, I can add a border to the right. So let's add that in. And then we can do the same along the top here. So click and drag across, add a border to the bottom. I also want to add a border for my totals. So I can click and drag here, and let's add a border to the top. So we have a very simple template now that shows the expenses for the business for year one, the list of the expenses, the frequency of them, and the amount. But we're not quite done yet. If you're a bit confused, then stick with the video because I'll explain more as we go on. Now, just to tidy things up a bit, I'm going to highlight this whole template and I'm going to center the text. I think it just makes things look a bit more professional. And year one, I'm going to make in bold. And highlighting down here, I'm going to make that in bold too, so the totals stand out. Now some formula we have to add to this expenses forecast. For month one, down the bottom here in C20, we type equals. Then sum, we open a bracket. Highlight the boxes above from C5 to C19, close the bracket. So this is how the formula should look, equals sum, open bracket C5 to C19, close bracket, click enter. Now what will happen is, as we enter figures into this expenses forecast, there'll be a running total down the bottom here. So if we, if we put 200 in insurance, it goes up by 200. Office costs, if that's a thousand, you'll see the total goes up by a thousand. Now, because Excel is so clever, if I just click on the cell and then drag that box across, it will replicate that formula across the whole of the table. So you can see as I enter figures now into the template, the totals are being updated automatically. So let's now delete that. Now if you want to show these figures as actual currency, you can just highlight them, right click, go to format cells, and choose how you want to display those figures. So that's year one. All we need to do is highlight this, whole table, right click, click copy. Go to B22, right click, click paste, change the date to year two, and we have our second year of forecasting. We can then highlight year two, right click, click copy. This time we're going to click on B42. We're going to leave a bit of space here. That's simply to make the document a bit more printer friendly. Click paste. Change the date from year two to year three. And we have our three years of forecasting. 
Now the last thing we need to do with our expenses forecast is create totals for the years. So we have monthly totals for each year, but how about totals for the entire year? So all I'm going to do is down the bottom here is put in year, year one, year two, year three, put in total pounds for year one, click equals, sum, open the bracket, and let's highlight these totals in year one. Close the brackets, so it should look like this, equal sum, open bracket C20 to N20, close bracket, click enter. That's shown as zero. You'll now see if I put 500 in here and 500 in here. We have our totals for each month down the bottom. And then down here, we have a total for the year. We do the same for year two, equals sum open bracket, highlight the totals for year two, close the bracket. Year three equals sum, open bracket, highlight the totals for year three, click enter. Now to make this look a bit nicer, we can center the titles, make them bold and underlined. We can also center the figures down here. So that's our expenses forecast for our business plan, very straightforward. Obviously, if you have questions, leave them in the comment section below. But as expenses are now added to this template, you'll see they total for each month, so you know your expenditure for each month, which is crucial for when we do our cash flow forecast. But we also have totals for the year, which is crucial when we do our projected profit and loss statements. If we delete them, you see everything zeroes off. Now that's the template itself. As this series goes on, I will add figures to this template. So it looks a bit bare at the moment. But please remember, this is just the first video on creating these templates. In the next video, we will look at the sales forecast. Thank you so much for watching. To watch more free videos, just go to freebookkeepingaccounting.com. There is a page all for business planning. You'll be able to find the next video there.